In this video, we want to explore a little more deeply what makes charges move in a circuit. And in doing that, we're going to also be able to understand a little more deeply what batteries do in a circuit and what it means to say that capacitors are full, what it means to say that you are charging a capacitor, and what discharging a capacitor is. Well, the first activity that we did is something that we call dueling batteries. And if you remember, what we did is we had a three-cell battery, and it was connected to two round bulbs. And we watched how bright the bulbs were. So we noticed um, this, by definition, is a three-arrow uh, tail flow rate. And so the charge flow uh, was in this direction. And the light bulbs, uh, we had also by definition three starbursts. Whoops. And then in the we added a uh, battery on the other side and we asked what would happen. And some people feel like batteries shoot stuff out of the positive terminal. So it, it seemed like if they do, then if you have three batteries here shooting stuff this way and this battery shooting stuff that way, that light bulb should be even brighter but we found out that that light bulb was not brighter. In fact, it was a little dimmer, which seemed a little bit confusing. And then we added another opposing battery. Uh, so now I had two batteries pushing this way and three pushing this way, and this was even dimmer. So it seemed like the batteries were fighting instead of adding, and we needed to understand that. And then finally, we put in the same battery pack as we had over here, and this battery pack pushed backwards, and this battery pack pushed forwards, and these light bulbs were not even lit at all. So we called that dueling batteries because it seems like the batteries are working against each other. So over here, no battery is working against this one. Here you have one battery working against three. Here you have two batteries working against three. And here three is working against three. So the question is, what does the dueling batteries activity tell us about what batteries do in a circuit? Well, it appears that dueling batteries uh, show that batteries can push against each other so it shows that batteries actually just push. They don't shoot anything out of them. Uh, they actually push, and in dueling batteries, we showed that they could push against each other, and in fact, we even saw that they could cancel each other out. Now, if we watch carefully, we could actually see that a capacitor behaves like a dueling battery. Let's see what that would be like. Well, the similarity of dueling batteries to capacitor charging is that when I first make the connection the light bulbs are for a capacitor the light bulbs are lit and then the light bulbs get dim this is a little dimmer than this and then the light bulbs get dim and then they go out so if I could do dueling batteries really fast like go from no battery to one cell to two cells to three cells I would see the light bulb go from bright to dimmer, to really dim, to out. So it appears that a capacitor behaves just like a dueling battery that's getting stronger. When it starts, it's as if the capacitor is as if there's no dueling battery, but then rapidly it behaves like a battery that's opposing or dueling, but it's getting stronger. So now I could see why capacitors would eventually stop charging why the light bulb goes out when you're charging a capacitor because the capacitor has become like a battery opposing the real battery and it matches it reaches the strength of the original battery so it's completely canceling it out so charges don't move anymore and the light bulbs go out so a capacitor that is charged is one that has acquired the same backwards push that the original battery is pushing forwards with. Well, to help us understand that a little bit better, we did a second activity 
where we're trying to answer the question, well, when are capacitors full? So when we had this circuit, where you have a battery pack and a capacitor, and you have two light bulbs, and you would connect this circuit, you would see the normal behavior, which is the light bulbs are originally lit, and then eventually they go out. Now when we used to be asked the question, uh, why do the light bulbs go out? We would say, well, that's when the capacitor is full. So the light bulbs going out would mean we would say the capacitor is full. So then the question we got asked is, well, if I add a second battery pack to this, can I light the light bulbs again? And you would think the answer would be no, because we thought the capacitor was full. But we found out that when you connected the battery pack, sure enough, you did the light the light bulbs again, and then they went out again. So what I thought was a full capacitor, we could put more charge in. So what did we learn from adding battery packs to a full capacitor? We learned that the light bulbs don't go out because the capacitor is full in the sense of you can't put anything more in it. Because when we put a second battery pack in there, we found out you could put some more in there. So maybe what we mean by full is capacitors are become as full of charge as the battery pack can make it. But if you push harder, in other words, if you add more battery packs, you can push even more charges in. So capacitors become as full as the battery can make them. If I'm inflating a bike tire, and I'm pretty weak, so if I put as much air in the bike tire as I can, and I say, well, I can't put any more in because the tire is full, but then you say, because you're a lot stronger than me, well, let me try, and you find out you can put more in, then it turns out that the bike tire wasn't really full. It was just as full as I could make it. So what we mean to say that a capacitor is full, the capacitor is as full of charge as whatever batteries you are using can put in there. But there's always room for more if you push harder. In other words, if you add more batteries. So what batteries seem to do in a circuit is they push, but they have a limited amount of push. A 4.5 volt battery battery pack can only push so much if you add a second 4.5 volt battery pack, so you have 9 volts, that can push more. So the volts kind of can tell you how much it can push. But that's all that batteries do is they push. Let's look more deeply into this idea of batteries pushing. Let's see if there's some analogy to pushing that we can use that will help us to understand what's going on in a circuit. This idea is called an electric pressure. So what we could say is that extra charge that is pumped into a capacitor plate by a battery is like extra air being pumped into a tire. Stronger and stronger pressure can make more and more charge be compressed into a capacitor plate. So just like if I am pumping air into a tire, the air doesn't really want to be all confined in the tire. It, you'll have to really confine it in there. Um, more and more charges in a capacitor plate, because like charges repel, they don't really want to be in there. But more and more pressure can force more and more charges to fit in a capacitor plate. And just like if I have pressure in a bike tire, and it's really high pressure, it could be released by opening the valve, and then the air that I was pushing into the tire will all come out of the bike valve. In the same way, if I've compressed a lot of charges in a capacitor plate, if I let it out, that which is called discharging it, then that pressure formed by charges compressed in a plate, that pressure will be released and charges will flow out. And it will be in the opposite direction, like we saw from the compass in the first activity, because if I put charges in, when I discharge it, the charges will come out, which is in the opposite direction. So let's connect some ideas about pressure here to some of our electrical ideas that we've been working with. We would say, particularly in a bike tire, 
that the effort to expand by the compressed air in the bike tire, the fact that the air is trying to push outward, which inflates the bike tire, we would call that effort that the air is making to expand outward, we would call that the air pressure in the bike tire. So we also are going to use the term electric pressure for the same effort by compressed charge. So in a capacitor, if I have forced a lot of charge in there, because like charges repel, it wants to get out, we're going to call that pressure that is generated by the charges wanting to get out, we're going to call that electric pressure. So a charged capacitor, we're going to now say, could also be called a pressurized capacitor. The pressure that would be in the capacitor, or the pressure that a battery produces, is measured in terms of a unit called volts. And if you remember, volts are the unit of electric potential or electric potential difference. So the number of volts is like the pressure that a battery could produce. So here's another way to look at what batteries do. Within the battery, a battery behaves like a pump. And charges come into the negative terminal of the battery, and the battery pumps those charges from the negative terminal up to the positive terminal. So what happens is charges are continually being supplied to the positive terminal of the battery, and because you're getting more and more charges there, a higher pressure of charges, higher accumulation of charges, develops at this terminal. Because charges are being pumped away from the negative terminal of the battery, this has fewer charges than normal, so it would be a lower pressure. So we would represent in the battery, the pluses would represent a higher pressure, more charges than normal. Minus refers to fewer charges than normal. So we would have compression in the top of the battery, excess charges, and we would have depletion in the negative terminal of the battery, that's fewer charges. So a compression in the top terminal of the battery would we would call a high pressure. And depletion of charges in the lower terminal, negative terminal, is called low pressure. So a battery is a device, if I'm going to use the pressure picture, a battery is a device that maintains a pressure difference between high pressure and low pressure across its terminals. Anything connected to the positive terminal of the battery is going to have a high pressure. Anything that's going to be connected to the negative terminal of the battery is going to be a low pressure. If you have a device that has high pressure on one side and low pressure on the other side, for air, air moves from high pressure to low pressure. If you stick a knife in the side of the bike tire, air will come out because the pressure inside the bike tire is higher than the pressure outside in the atmosphere. So air wants to go from high to low, so we're also going to say charges want to go from high electric pressure to low electric pressure. So a battery now becomes a device that is able to move charges around a circuit because charges want to go from high pressure to low pressure, and the battery is a device that's able to maintain that difference between its two terminals. So hopefully now you can see batteries are not rechargeable. The charge in the battery isn't really what the battery is about at all. A battery is a pump that pumps charges from the negative terminal up to the higher, up to the positive terminal, so that it is able to maintain at all times a high pressure on the positive, low pressure on the negative, and the difference between the high and the low pressure we measure in volts. So let's talk about the relationship between our super common electrical terms, volts and amps. What's the relationship between electric pressure and charge flow? So from everything we've said so far, how would you answer this question? What's the relationship between electric pressure and charge flow? And what we would say is differences in electric pressure cause charges to flow. 
charges want to flow from high pressure to low pressure. So we would say differences in this cause that. Now we're going to ask exactly the same question here, only instead of using the terms that maybe are easier for us to understand, electric pressure and charge flow, we're going to use the official science names. So instead of electric pressure, in official science name is called electric potential difference. And charge flow is called current. So asking this question here, what's the relationship between electric potential difference and current, is exactly the same question as this. The answer for the first question was, differences in electric pressure cause charge flow. So what we would say is electric potential differences, which are measured in volts, cause charge flow, which is called current that we measure in amps. So we could conceivably say volts cause amps. So now we finish with a really important question, and we have a very good picture now that would help us to answer it. And that question is, why do the light bulbs light? A light bulb lights when charges flow through it. Now we know what would cause charges to flow in a circuit, and the answer is charges flow in response to differences in pressure between two places in a circuit. So if on a light bulb there is a difference in pressure between the two sides of the light bulb, that pressure difference will drive charges through the light bulb. So what causes light bulbs to light are differences in pressure across the light bulb.